Welcome back, I'm James, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can self-host the plausible analytics software, which will give you an alternative to Google Analytics and others if you don't want to actually be sending your traffic data elsewhere and you want to keep hold of all of that information yourself. Uh, so if you haven't heard of Plausible, uh, it's basically a uh, analytics software which is open source and they do provide a managed paid plan that you can sign up for, but you can actually host it yourself quite easily as well and they provide lots of instructions on the site to do this which is really handy uh, but it kind of falls over a little bit towards the end for me uh, when you get to the section of setting up a, a secure connection so they provide some instructions on setting up a reverse proxy uh, and I tried out a few of the different methods that they uh, suggest and uh, I came up with my own solution using Docker containers with Nginx. Uh, so that's the kind of purpose of this tutorial and what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, but we'll first get the analytics software set up uh, so you can see how that works uh, and it'll be mostly just following through these instructions. So just before you get started, what you will need is a couple of things. Uh, you're going to need to have a server set up uh, with Git and Docker already installed. And I did a tutorial a few weeks ago where we registered a domain name, uh, pointed it to a DigitalOcean server and got Docker set up as well. Uh, so if you want to check that out, that will get you set up and everything that you need to do. But we'll crack on and actually log on to the server now. And then we're going to go and grab the analytics software from Plausible. Uh, and as mentioned, that's just a case of following these instructions. So the first thing we're going to do is just clone the uh, data that we've grabbed, uh, the source code rather, from uh, Plausible's GitHub account. And I'm just going to put this in a folder called Plausible, uh, just so I can keep track of it. And if we go into here, this is all of the uh, code that's been uh, imported from the github repository and it's simply a case of uh, editing this configuration file here this plausible conf.env uh, so there's a couple of changes you need to make in there and you'll notice that there is some stuff for the reverse proxy uh, setup as well uh, so you can either use caddy uh, which is a, a kind of system that's built to uh, set up your upstream services and, and secure them with ssl uh, so you could take a look at that but i, I didn't get on with it and I uh, think there's a few problems with the setup there potentially uh, but there is also some uh, configuration files some example configuration files for Apache and Nginx etc uh, so if you've already got that running on your server you could probably just copy those across and get your SSL set up that way um, but I'm going to be doing this we're using a docker container as mentioned and that docker container will just basically have an Nginx image and we'll also get the cert bot from let's encrypt as well uh, to get our SSL certificate so we'll crack on anyway so the next thing to do is to put some details into this uh, configuration file so uh, the first thing they do say to do uh, is to put a secret into it and uh, they actually provide with an example uh, command here to do that so let's just copy that uh, paste that into our terminal it doesn't really matter which terminal you're pasting it into and then we'll grab that secret key uh, and then if we just go into the plausible conf.env see there's two things to put in here so the first thing is that secret key and the other thing is the base URL. Now they only really use this to actually generate the script tags uh, that you then insert into your sites to get the analytics working. Uh, so we can set that straight away to the uh, secure connection that is pointing or will be pointing to uh, the domain name that we're going to be using, which in our case is jbdigitalmedia.link. So we'll save that. And that's basically the configuration done. And we can get this up and running to test it uh, just by uh, pulling up all the Docker containers that are inside of the compose file. So we'll say docker compose up, run it in a detached state. Uh, if I put in my password here for the user on the server, I think I've typed that wrong. Let me try again. Yeah, I absolutely did type it wrong. Let's try one more time. And what that will do is Docker will actually go and uh, pull all the, the plausible containers and uh, get that up and running. So we should find now if we go to the domain, uh, so if we go to JB Digital Media Link and go to port 8000, which is the default uh, port that uh, plausible would expose, you'll see that the, uh, the analytics software is up and running. Uh, and we can actually register an account now and log in, but obviously we're on an unsecure connection and probably don't really want it running on port 8000 as well. Uh, so that's something that we're going to fix uh, with our Nginx setup and the reverse proxy. Uh, so we'll move on to that next. What we want to do is just create an Nginx configuration file. Uh, so we'll do that in here. Uh, so just call it nginx.conf, for example. And I'm just going to paste in a standard Nginx configuration file. So we're listening on port 80. So we're not setting up our SSL connection at the moment. Uh, listening for the, on this domain. And we've got two locations. The first being anything for forward slash. 
will just uh, redirect us to the plausible uh, software that we've got running. And then the other thing is that we will uh, have a, an endpoint or a location uh, for the uh, certificate challenges when they come through. And finally, we've added a resolver line in here so that we can actually use Docker's DNS resolving. So I can literally just say, uh, use the container name of plausible uh, rather than uh, actually have to rely on updating the IP address in here. So we'll save that configuration file. And when I was doing this uh, previously, just to test this out, I wanted to uh, create another Docker file uh, to manage all of the Nginx stuff, but it got a bit tricky. And if you look in the actual code we've downloaded, we've already got a Docker Compose file here, which keeps track of all the plausible containers. So we might as well just use that and update it. And it'll just help keep everything together and obviously uh, make the networking a little bit easier as well. So we're going to add in the Nginx service into here, so the container for that. So we're just going to paste this in here and just make sure everything's lining up in the YAML file, otherwise we'll get some errors. So we're just basically adding the uh, Nginx image, uh, making sure these ports are available uh, for both HTTP and non-HTTP connections. And of course, we're copying across that config file that we just created into Nginx, uh, into the container's default configuration. Uh, so we're also adding in this uh, container to a network's uh, property and we've uh, created a network called plausible uh, so what we want to do is just everything else in here as well to make sure it's part of the same network uh, so they can all talk to each other so for the mail uh, which we're not using in this example uh, for the database itself uh, there's another container here for the uh, events database as well and then you've got the plausible uh, code itself the software itself and uh, we're just going to make sure that's part of the same network. And for the actual network itself, let's just uh, paste in uh, a bridge network down here. So the plausible network that we've been adding all the containers to will just help everything uh, be connected together. And then there's finally two things that we want to change for this plausible container. So at the moment it doesn't actually have a container name. Uh, so when we're referencing it in the Nginx config in the DNS, it won't actually be found. So let's say the container name is plausible. Uh, you can call it anything you like. And of course, at the moment it's exposed. Uh, it's running on port 8000 on the domain name. So we don't want that. We just want to restrict it to local access. So we'll say it's only available on the local host on port 8000, uh, which is fine because the proxy will be able to see that. So we'll save that. And then what we'll do is we'll just recreate all the containers. So uh, they've got all the networking and stuff set up. So we'll say docker compose uh, up. Uh, detach and also force recreate just to make sure all of the containers have got the new config so if we uh, reload that it should recreate all of those uh, different uh, containers and i think are they all done i'm not sure if output looks a bit strange there uh, but it seems to be all done we'll check with the uh, oh no, it's still running so sudo docker ps just to list all of the docker containers didn't seem to work for some reason there we go Okay, so we should be able to see there that we've got all of those uh, Docker containers set up. So we've got all the plausible stuff and we should find there's one for Nginx as well, which I don't actually see. Let's tr try that again. Uh, no, it doesn't seem to be running there. So let's have a look at the logs for that. So it seems to be saying that it can't find the plausible domain. So maybe I did make, uh, so maybe I did make a mistake in that, that Docker config file. So let's just have a look at that again. Uh, what did I call the container for plausible here? It looks all good, so let me uh, just try that again. Uh, maybe just run the docker command one more time. Just forcing uh, the recreation of all those different things. Uh, so it's saying Nginx is done this time, and we've got the two other containers as well. Uh, they're just coming up. I'll just give those a second. And then finally plausible. So uh, if we have a look at the logs... Okay, so this time it seems to have started no problem, so not sure what happened there. And if we have a look at what's running inside Docker again, uh, we should find, now we've got Nginx set up. So uh, what we should find now is if we go back to the uh, site that we had, uh, if I refresh the page, I can no longer access the plausible analytics software on port 8000. You see it's just spinning out there now. Um, and if I try to go to the main domain on port 80, we should be going through Nginx now and then being routed to the plausible analytics software. We should find we should be able to access the software here. I've got a feeling Chrome's probably going to try and redirect us to the HTTPS uh, version here, uh, which it seems to be doing. 
but if we just check on the uh, terminal here, if we were to do a, a curl uh, to local, uh, if we do a curl to the domain name, for example, uh, digital uh, media media dot link uh, on port 80 uh, I think it should just uh, you can see we've got some HTML it should be redirecting us to the the login page for example so that's all up and running and we've got the reverse proxy set up the next thing is we want to get the SSL certificate set up so we're going to go uh, back to the docker compose uh, file and we're going to add another container in here so we're going to add in the certbot container uh, so the first thing I'm just going to copy and paste this again save some time typing it all out um, so just below this nginx stuff uh, we'll paste in a reference to the official certbot image uh, which is basically uh, let's encrypt software so it creates a couple of folders that are referenced by nginx and uh, when a certificate is requested it creates a kind of challenge and then it just verifies that you've uh, got the access to the server to actually do that so those volumes need to be referenced in the nginx config as well so we'll just go up here into uh, the nginx image as well so we've got the corresponding uh, folders set up so that nginx and the certbot software can talk to each other and when a request is made for the certificate it will be downloaded and put in the right place for nginx to use as well and there's one final thing that we just need to have uh, in the certbot software and there's a command that we need to run uh, once the uh, bits and pieces uh, or the container for the code is actually set up and running. Uh, so the command looks a little bit like this. I should make sure that is lined up correctly. Uh, so we're going to run this uh, only command and you can see here it's referencing the the different volumes that are available in the Docker containers. And so we're going to uh, set an email uh, for a renewal notification as well. So we're just going to use the JB Digital uh, Media uh, uh, domain and then also the dash domain means that we're going to actually uh, specify which domain we're requesting certificates for. Uh, so if we save that docker compose file now, what I'm going to do is just recreate the nginx uh, container first of all. So sudo docker compose up detached force uh, recreate nginx uh, because don't forget we updated the, uh, the volumes uh, that are available there. And it might be worth at this point going to make a cup of tea uh, because I think uh, you need to kind of just wait just a few seconds just to allow Docker to uh, update all those volumes and, and recreate the container. Because what I found when I was planning this part of the tutorial is um, the certbot uh, command uh, can fail if those uh, bits and pieces aren't set up with Nginx. Uh, so go and have five minutes, come back and uh, hopefully when we get certbot running with the Docker command, uh, it should be all good. Uh, so let's uh, have a go at that now. So we can say docker compose uh, up dash uh, detached. Um, don't need to force recreate, but we're going to run the certbot command. And fingers crossed, this will go and request the certificates and put them in the right place uh, for Nginx to use. So we'll just check what's happened there. So sudo docker logs certbot. And it looks like it was absolutely fine. So that's good. So we've got the certificate and you can see where it's been saved as well. So it's been saved in these two locations here. And so, yeah, it's all good. We've got those certificates. Phew, that was a panic over there. So with that done, the only thing we really need to do now is configure Nginx to actually use uh, the certificates that we've just uh, requested and downloaded. Uh, so we're going to replace the Nginx config with this code. So let me go over to Nginx config and we'll just get rid of all this. Uh, we're gonna be using the same stuff, but I've just moved it all around. So uh, two things. The first thing is we've created a new server block to listen on port uh, 443 for SSL connections. And you can see the SSL certificates that are being used are the ones that the uh, Let's Encrypt software has uh, downloaded and, and provided to us. And we've still got our proxy pass in there as well. Uh, but what I've added in here as well, which you don't necessarily need to have, is the server still listening on port 80. Uh, and it basically just redirects any non-secure traffic uh, to the secure server. So we can save that. Make sure that was saved and then we'll just recreate the nginx config uh, sorry docker container one more time as well uh, so oops force recreate nginx and the reason we're doing that is because we're reloading to new nginx config and um, what we should find now if we go fingers crossed over here to the domain name that we've got refreshing that we're now seeing the plausible software on port 
443 uh, on the domain name and uh, it's a secure connection and it's secured with our Let's Encrypt uh, certificate. So we're pretty much up and running now. We can go and register an account. And um, what I'm going to do is actually register uh, an account, set up a new site and just add it to uh, the blog that I've been working on recently, uh, which uh, this will be actually an article on the blog. So you can go and read it if you want to. Um, and then we're going to do one final configuration step and then we're done. So we're going to go ahead and register an account now. So let's just fill in these details. So James at JB Digital Media dot link is the uh, it doesn't matter which email address you use there, but if you've got email set up on the server, then um, obviously you can receive notifications to it, uh, which we don't at the moment. But let's just create that account. And uh, the first thing it's going to ask you to do is to basically add a site. So uh, we're going to add a site for my domain uh, for that blog that I just showed you, and. If you click this add snippet, you can see it gives you this script uh, tag, which you then need to add into your HTML content or somewhere in your app uh, so that the, uh, the requests that are made for the pages are sent back to plausible. So I'm actually going to go over to Visual Studio Code here now. And in the index page for uh, this blog, I'm just going to drop this into the uh, head of the HTML. and. I'm just going to push this up to the repository. So um, add analytics is the message. So if we push that up, um, it should get built and uh, should be available to us on the server in a couple of seconds. Uh, so uh, you go to this next page and it says it, before it should start showing you any, any information, it will uh, be waiting for a page view. And if I just refresh the page here now, it might take a little bit longer uh, just for the deployment to go through. So should see it somewhere in here in a moment. Uh, okay, yeah, the, so the, uh, the script is there, so go back to plausible, and you can see uh, it's now uh, serving uh, requests for analytics uh, from our plausible account. So any page views that go to the, the blog now will show up in here, and uh, at this point you can have a look through the plausible software and see how that all works. But before we wrap up and finish the actual tutorial, there's one other bit of configuration that you might want to do. So I've got an account to log in here at the moment, uh, but you can see that you can still register new accounts. So anyone could come along here and register an account and start using the uh, plausible software without me uh, approving it. So we're actually going to stop that from happening. And that's pretty easy to do um, in this plausible conf uh, dot, uh, m file. Uh, I think is it disable registration? Uh, we need to set that to invite only. You can set it to false so that the registration is just completely turned off, but let's set it to invite only because we might want to send some requests to people to log in. And of course, what we'll need to do is just make sure plausible is uh, recreated as well. So uh, we'll just run uh, force uh, recreate for uh, plausible. I think I'll probably uh, make sure all of the other containers are recreated as well. Apart from Nginx and Certbot, we don't need to worry about those. Um, but when that's done, we should find that that config uh, setting has been updated and the registration is actually now uh, disabled uh, on the site. If we go over and refresh the page, you can see that the uh, the registration uh, button has now gone. Uh, so it's only me that can log in or I can log in and send requests to other people. So there we go. That was quite a journey, wasn't it? Like, so going through all of those different containers and getting the plausible software uh, set up. But hopefully you've learned quite a lot actually about uh, using Docker uh, and linking uh, things together and creating reverse proxies, of course. And uh, it might not be plausible that you might be hosting, but if you wanted to set up a reverse proxy, the process is exactly the same. You just add in that Nginx uh, image and the config, set up certbot and make sure everything's uh, linked together. And uh, from that point there, you just uh, point whatever uh, uh, app uh, you want to use in the reverse proxy. Um, but there you go. Hopefully you found that useful. Uh, there is a blog post if you want to read through all the details, uh, but I'll leave it there for now. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.